Hello everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of Decoding the Unknown. I, as always, am your host, Simon. In this show, what happens is Katie will write me a script. This one, uh, did aliens build the pyramids? I feel is almost is almost too cliched. When I was coming up, this channel's relatively new. If you're new here, hello. If you're watching from distant times in the future and you just came back through the archive, I hope this channel's doing well. Or it was cancelled a few episodes after it got going. Or, you know, that could have happened. Anyway, I think I came up with this as like the example of the sort of thing we could be doing on this channel, but kind of like the let's not do this. And then I thought, eh, let's do it anyway. Why not? Because it is so ridiculous. And uh, this, the original name for this channel was going to be called The Mystery Channel. And then we decided that we didn't want to get sued by Disney, who do absolutely own everything, because I was like, wait, who owns the History Channel? Because we we're making, you know, make, it's making fun of the History Channel by calling it The Mystery Channel and making fun of pyramids being built by aliens, because what happened to you, History Channel? And then I found out the History Channel was owned by A&E, which is owned by Disney, and then it's like, no, you don't go to war with Disney. <laughs> Just don't do it. Let's get into it. Pyramids are huge. First three words, true. Sometimes made up of millions of blocks weighing multiple tons transported for many miles. They act as shrines and monuments, but also as solar calendars and compasses, accurate to within tenths of a degree. So how were people in ancient Egypt able to pull off this feat of construction when they hadn't even invented the wheel? Those idiots! <laughs> how were the pyramids built so well that many of them are still standing today? For some people, there's only one plausible answer. Aliens, and by those sub people, we mean the History Channel. And then a door opened, and people walked out. It is just so bizarre. Like I, I, I was actually reading about this before I got started on this episode. Like what happened to the History Channel? And it was basically like, yeah, yeah, yeah. History content just doesn't do as well as like uh, crazy reality shows and conspiracy theories. So that's what happens. Like they make business decisions. I mean, obviously, I've made incorrect business decisions because here I am on YouTube making skeptical history videos and podcasts and stuff. It's like, well done, Simon. What? Learn some business lessons from the business daddy of them all, Disney. E.T. at work. Why do people think that visitors from outer space either built the pyramids themselves or helped poor old ancient humans do it? There are clues if you look hard enough. The Egyptian pyramids were and still are an enduring testament to building and engineering. The Great Pyramid of Giza was the oldest of the original seven wonders of the ancient world and is what is the only one on the list that's still standing today over 4,600 years later. That's impressive. When it was originally built, it stood at 481 feet, that's 146 meters tall. Over the years, the casing out side has been eroded, leaving the slightly smaller inner structure that we can see today. It was all marble, or not marble, but it was it like white limestone or sandstone? Or They used to be white and more gleaming than they are today, which I thought was cool. But it wasn't just they were eroded, those pieces were also taken away to build other stuff because in the past people were like, ah, it's pyramid, it's just old as shit. Let's, uh, let's use its bricks to build something else. The mystery of how the pyramids were built has never been 100% definitively solved, so this leaves room for the, shall we say, alternative theories. The extraterrestrial helpers theory was floating around before the 20th century? Whoa, really? That's a long time ago. But it really gained ground when Swiss author Eric von Daniken published Chariots of the Gods? Unsolved Mysteries of the Past in 1968. The book, which touted the theory of ancient astronauts visiting the Earth to help build some of the best-known ancient structures, was a runaway success. Interest. People just love a conspiracy theory. It's not a run runaway success doesn't mean it's correct. You know? Like, back to the future. Wait a minute. Runaway success of a movie doesn't mean it was correct. There's no facts in there. <laughs> Interest was still high in 2009 when Von Daniken started appearing in and eventually producing the show Ancient Aliens. It's the same dude. Shit. God damn it, man. What are you up to? Why do you have to do this to everyone? Why do you have to spread this misinformation? You'd be banned from YouTube or Twitter or whichever one of those platforms bans people for like spreading COVID misinformation and shit. It's probably not that piece of shit that is Facebook, is it, to be honest? Allegedly, Facebook's a piece of shit. I mean, not in, in my opinion, not an objective fact. Please don't sue me. One of the questions people have with the pyramids is how were the stone blocks, most of which weighed over two tons, moved to the site? The pyramids were built some many miles away from where the stone was quarried, so how is it possible without wheel transport? How are the cut blocks then lifted so high up a steep-sided structure? 
The main tools used at the time were made from copper and weren't particularly well suited for large-scale projects like a pyramid. The Great Pyramid at Giza was constructed about over about 20 years, meaning that workers would be working at a mind-boggling rate of placing multiple blocks per minute. This is impossible without some sort of advanced technology. Well, they also had a lot of people working really hard, didn't they? And also, uh, we did a, I did a video on another channel that I, call, uh, that I, that I present called uh, Today I Found Out, and it posited the theory and it's like, well, it wasn't our theory. It was like a theory by some academic Egyptologist dude that the pyramids were possibly, the bricks were possibly cement. Like they were liquid and then poured and left to set. And that's how they did it. And it's like, I'm not sure I left that video entirely believing this dude's theory. But I was like, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Go watch the video. I'm not going to elaborate on it more now because I half remember it and I'm definitely going to get all the facts wrong. But uh, if you want to go check that video out, why not? There was also the alignment of the pyramids to take into account. Many were very accurately aligned with True North, surely not a likely feat for ancient builders. The three main pyramids at Giza, Khufu's Great Pyramid, the Pyramid of Khafra, and the Pyramid of Menkare, are arranged in the same formation as the stars in Orion's belt constellation. And here's where it gets even more intense. Robert Balval and Adrian Gilbert wrote a book called The Orion Mystery, Unlocking the Secrets of the Pyramids in 1995. Amongst other things, one of their findings was that by backtracking the movement of the the stars with a computer program, they could work out exactly when the Orion's Belt constellation lined up with the pyramids at Giza, therefore telling us the precise date that they were built. Using this method, it was revealed that the pyramids weren't in fact built around 2560 BC, but rather 10,450 BC. Um, at that point, isn't it just like a coincidence that the stars are lining up? Because we could be pretty sure. I mean, I don't know the size, but I'm sure there's like carbon dating or like other archaeological evidence. Or I mean, that period of time, don't they have like that sand sediment layers to go through and all this stuff? We didn't get it wrong by 7,000 years. I mean, by we, I mean like established science. As this was way before the Egyptians or humans in general were doing anything remotely resembling large-scale engineering projects, surely this is the time that a highly advanced culture swooped in and planted their 3D triangular flags. What have the pyramids got to do with ancient human culture anyway? They're too big for an efficient use of resources and suddenly started popping up from nowhere. Yo, let's talk about humans and efficient uses of resources because we're terrible at this. And also when it comes into like weird, like, yeah, yeah, this would be as confusing to people in the future like cathedrals. Why did they build these super elaborate cathedrals to something like assuming in the future that, I mean, <laughs> my opinion, like, uh, I'm not like some super atheist dude. I'm probably like agnostic-ish. I don't know if that's the thing, but I'm like not denying that there's possibly a god and all of that stuff. I mean, of course, it's entirely possible. But yo, know, the idea that like the 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 cathedral you built is that's the way to worship God is like the the god that's in books and stuff of any religion. I just find that a bit silly. Um, so people in the long future, assuming that like the ancient Egyptians' religions, we've kind of largely forgotten and they've all fallen out of favor. Like, let's assume we've forgotten all about it. Like, wasting resources, people are going to be like, yo, what's up with all these cathedrals? That's as weird as the pyramids. I mean, the pyramids are a bit bigger, but cathedrals are super elaborate and they've got all these paintings of like, who will probably think in the future are all just fictional people. It's really weird. Was Eric von Däniken right with his ancient astronaut theory? No! <laughs> well, there are various Egyptian carvings and cave art from around the globe showing what proponents say are ancient astronauts. It's generally because the figures are wearing some sort of helmet akin to what human astronauts use nowadays. Also, some pharaohs are portrayed in godlike proportions, sometimes with elongated heads. This has given rise to theories about ancient alien gods mating with humans and then causing a great flood to wipe out this transgression, but I think that's a rabbit hole for another day. Yeah, or just let's leave that because it's obviously a bit crazy. To wrap this section up, the idea that aliens built or helped build the pyramids exists because the technology at the time was insufficient to build these gigantic structures, there is pictorial proof of ancient space beings, and the fact remains that even with today's knowledge, no one has been able to plausibly recreate a large pyramid using non-modern methods, so aliens must be the answer. Right? Well, please imagine a record scratch now. Well, because this is a sure podcast, a YouTube video, Jen, the producer on this show, could probably add a record scratch right about now. Thank you, Jen. Humans, surprisingly clever. This is a very niche reference, but if you ever watched a pre-crib celebrity Holmes TV show in the 90s called Through the Keyhole, imagine the weirdly accident co-presenter Lloyd Grossman saying, let's look at the evidence. Wait, I have no idea what this pre-cribs TV show is. I've seen cribs, I mean a few times, it's a bit weird. 
But uh, they'll just be like, if so, <laughs> can we come look at your house, Whistler? No one's coming to look at my I'm not anywhere near famous enough to like for anyone to want to come and look at my house. But if they did, I'd be like, no, it's my house. <laughs> Why would I let you look around my house? It's weird. Get out. First off, the whole astronauts in artwork. In the examples given by Bondanikin, it's always a case of seeing what you want to see. The fact that there are so few examples throughout history of humanoid figures with re something resembling a spacesuit or helmet goes to show that are, they are probably not depicting alien or future space travelers. There's a carving on Mayan Rida Pakal, the great sarcophagus lid, that shows him piloting a spaceship, according to Van Daniken. According to actual experts in Mayan history, <laughs> ah, screw those guys though. The carvings are common and important ones symbolizing cosmological signs, the, the world, tree, and death. The pose Pakal is in denotes rebirth, not in picking out a location in time and space to help some humans build a big pyramid. Shocking. Pharaohs were depicted as larger than life, as that's how they were perceived by their people, and many had self-proclaimed first-hand links to the various deities. The whole elongated head thing is a bit weird, but we know that Egyptians' rulers liked to keep it in the family when it came to the line of succession, so genetic abnormalities were to be expected. Keep it in the family is the nicest way that I've ever heard incest. Generations of incest being described. Also, head binding was totally a thing and was practiced by many cultures around the world to mold the head into whatever shape was considered to be the optimum one. I feel like the optimum head shape is the one that evolution has decided is the, the optimum head shape. And probably, I mean, I'm assuming there's some head shape that we're going to evolve in the future, which is going to be more optimum. But I don't think we're going to be like necessarily getting a better head shape by wrapping it in cloth in the ancient times. <laughs> Just sounds like a recipe for trouble, to be honest. Weird by today's standards? Yes. Linked to aliens? No. So let's look at the Orion's Belt 10,000 BC theory. It's just a coincidence, right? You're just lining it up and be like, well, that's when it lines up, so that's when it must have been built. It's like, well, that's just when it lines up. Doesn't mean that's when it was built at all. I don't know why you'd think that. What's wrong with you? I mean, wow, if true, that's probably the biggest proof of extraterrestrial visitors having come to Earth. The likelihood of that, though, is not super high. Get any three things in a rough line, and I'm pretty sure they match the position of Orion's Belt at some point in the history of the universe. This seems to be the case of engineering the result to fit your theory. Yes, I'm over to the fact that the three main pyramids at Giza might have been aligned to copy Orion's Belt. That seems fair. But they are also aligned so that they don't block each other. And the one in the middle of Khafre's pyramid is built on a higher piece of land to look taller than his father's great pyramid, even though it isn't really. So aesthetics and one-up shit seem to play a big role. But what about all the other astrological alignments and compass points etc how can they be so accurate i hear you whine yeah but not me i'm already like yeah yeah it's ridiculous but maybe maybe there's someone who's less skeptical listening to this right now well sorry to break it to you people but back in the day they're actually quite adept at tracking the stars i mean think about it it was the only system of mapping they had so they could easily use them to work out which way things were supposed to face yeah i mean that's how they navigated in the past right they had also developed things to make construction easier such as a set square and simple weighted leveler the examples of these have been found at pyramid construction sites more advanced alien technology has not. So now let's get on to how these pyramids were actually built. Yes, I know we haven't been able to build one exactly like the ancient people bit did, but it's probably because we haven't really tried. It's like because it would be an enormous use of resources. Some academic somewhere is going to try and get a grant to do this, and they're going to be like, yo, we could put money into so much other cool stuff for the cost of you building a giant pyramid in the desert that's going to, you know, I mean, that's a big grant. That's a really big grant. This is because we haven't tried to, exactly. No one needs to build a 500-foot pyramid in the middle of the desert anymore. They, expect they ne never needed to in the first place, arguably. Experiments have been carried out showing that, yes, it's easily possible to transport extremely heavy stone blocks without modern technology. The Egyptians probably used wooden sleds and likely wet the ground in front of them to help them slide across. They could use manpower or oxen to pull or push the sleds. The Nova pyramid building experiment carried out in 1997 could get a two-ton stone moving with fewer than 20 men. There were thousands of people in the Egyptian workforce. This is not a big mystery. Also, stone cutting was their thing. It might seem like a huge task to us today to cut up big chunks of stone, but it was the obvious choice for Egyptians. Copper tools were also capable of doing this, provided there was also a team of people to sharpen them up. As previously mentioned, the workforce numbered into the tens of thousands, so having a tool maintenance crew seems likely. Yeah, I mean, it really is amazing when you just get tens of thousands of people together and be like, get something done. <laughs> 
it's so many hands working. It's like that, you know, you can lift up a car. You get like, I don't know how many people, like round a car. It's like, and you just lift it up. And everyone's just putting in a little bit of effort and it all happens. It's just, uh, you know, when lots of people get cracking on something. The rate at which the pyramids went up also seems to be a sticking point. During my research, I came across various people saying that the rate at which the Great Pyramid was built, with 2.3 million blocks placed in 20 years, was totally inconceivable. That's a hell of a lot of blocks. But again, there's a lot of people. To that I say, welcome to the ancient Egyptian workforce. It's been estimated that 310 blocks would be needed to, place, needed to be placed a day to stay within this time frame. That's not per person, it's the total amount per day. Evidence physically carved onto pyramid stones confirms the existence of many teams of workers. Broken up between a few teams, 310 blocks a day seems much more doable. King Khufu's reign was 23 years, so adding on a couple of years to the bids, build schedule bril- brings the average time per block down again. The construction was also planned out beforehand, so it could all go rapidly up once the building phase started. The lower, wider levels of the pyramids use up the vast majority of the building materials, so they could be constructed relatively quickly before the blocks needed to be carried up higher. Also, the pyramids are not perfect, jigsaw pieced together things. There are gaps, cracks, and holes filled with smaller bits of rock, rubble, and gypsum mortar. If aliens did build them, they certainly left in lots of fake evidence of human participation. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about building a pyramid. Like, it's easy to put the first layer down, and it's also the biggest layer. Every step you go up, it becomes easier. I mean, it becomes harder to place the bricks, but it also becomes easier because there's way less of them to do. It's quite a nice thing to build, I guess. As to how the blocks were lifted up so high without cranes or alien levitating skills, recent evidence has come to show that Egyptians used that really advanced technology of a ramp. (laughs) Using a system of ramps, ropes, and post holes, a team of workers could haul a stone block or a sled carrying a block up the side of the pyramid, even at a steep angle. Sure, it wasn't easy, but it was not impossible. It didn't need to be easy. They had loads of people who were working really hard, and I don't think they were slaves, right? I think I made a video about that as well before. They weren't slaves, and they drank lots of beer. I think that's right. There was beer. Evidence has also been found that the pyramids were not built by... Oh my god. It's like I read these ahead or something which I don't do. Uh, built by, by paid workers. In 2010, archaeologists announced that they had uncovered tombs in the Giza complex containing preserved skeletons buried with jars of food for the afterlife. Slaves would have not been afforded this respect, and even though the work was hard, at least there was reward for doing it. These ideas did not come fully formed to the Egyptians, and the pyramids didn't just start appearing overnight. They evolved from earlier rectangular tombs called mastabas and gradually changed over time with a lot of trial and error. There are examples of the development of the Egyptians' methods with earlier incarnations such as the Stepped Pyramid of Jujosa and the Bent Pyramid of Darshur. By the way, I, just, I, I know the comments, there's people in the comments, but it's like, yes, I am absolutely guessing all of the names of the Egyptian pyramid dudes. And why pyramids at all? There are many reasons for the shape most likely linked to the ancient Egyptians' religious beliefs, but they're also just massive symbols to show how powerful their pharaohs were. To be able to mobilize the manpower and resources necessary to build one of these things is a testament to that. The shape, too, is key. The, a pyramid is an incredibly strong and stable shape, and these babies have lasted almost 5,000 years. What a lot of this seems to come down to is just really ragging on ancient people. We seem to find them incapable of being intelligent enough to work this out when it's clear that in a lot of ways they were far more ingenious than we give them credit for. It's also noticeable that people like Von Dana can only really concentrate on non-European, i.e. non-white people's achievements. Again, taking the stance that these people were primitive thinkers, could no way have worked it out for themselves, so some other power must have helped them. This is a racist and historically damaging way of thinking, but at least most people don't share his views. Perhaps the final nail in the coffin for von Daniken was that his worldwide bestseller, Chariots of the God, with a question mark, was reprinted for the 50th anniversary edition with a question mark dropped and the title on the title and a disclaimer on the copyright page now stating that this book is a work of fiction yeah so anyone like this is an interesting point it's like yeah yeah yeah. people are like said ancient humans couldn't have built the pyramids it's kind of a little bit racist when you really think about it isn't it i'm not actually saying there's no such thing as aliens definitely not i truly believe there are aliens do i think they visited earth probably not do i think they built the pyramids no there's just no evidence they built the pyramids. A well-organized, hard-working, engineering-minded, prosperous culture did that, and they were totally human. What I am saying is, while it's good to have an open mind, 
please think responsibly. Yes, and on that note, thank you for responsibly watching this episode. And if you want to be extra responsible, if you're listening to this in its podcast form, please do leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get this show. If you're watching this on YouTube, hello there. Please make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're smashing that like button. Hard, but not too hard. Or if you didn't like it, if you do believe that aliens built the pyramids, there is a dislike button for you to utilize below. Thanks for the watch time anyway, and I'll see you next time.